Coming up this week on High School Sports Weekly, brought to you by OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. We're going to recap week six on the gridiron in region play. We're also going to meet Tuscaloosa County Volleyball Head Coach Amanda Livingston and players Ellie Moore, Lauren Coker, Presley Thompson, and Hunter Browning. Our NSR feature this week is going to be on former Alabama player and current Baltimore Raven Bradley Bozeman. And we'll meet Thompson Volleyball standout Kelsey Tangle. That's all coming up. Stay with us right here on High School Sports Weekly. OS1 Sports Injury Clinic in Hoover is a proud partner of High School Sports Weekly. OS1 has fellowship trained sports medicine physicians right here in your community. There's no appointment needed, just drive up to the door. We've got x-ray and MRI on site. So now, being injured or having an orthopedic issue doesn't mean you need to be exposed to sick people. Avoid the hassle and time of going to an ER when you can get more specialized care in a more timely fashion at OS1. Open seven days a week to serve you. It's OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. You can find them online at bettersooner.com. Welcome in once again, everybody. I'm Chris Stewart along with Susan Carruthers. Another great week on the gridiron for high school football in Class 7A Region 3. Awfully busy. We're going to get right into the action. Actually, non-conference play in Week 6 of the uh, season. Hoover, a big win over Prattville, 28-6. Absolutely. That was a top-10 matchup in 7A, and Hoover handled Prattville pretty well. The, the uh, Bucks staying undefeated on the year, so too Thompson. They're 6-0, the top-ranked team in the state, one of the best in the country, as they rolled over a really good Mountain Brook team, 31-0. That's right, and Thompson, number one in 7A, Mountain Brook, number one in 6A. So an interesting matchup there. Connor Harrell was 17 for 21 with 217 yards. Also starting to get a lot of attention nationally mm -hmm. from recruiting experts as well. Hewitt Trustful, 5-1, very much in the mix in region play. They'll be back in region action. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But they had a tough one, not exactly offensive fireworks, but a great ball game with Huffman as the Huskies win it 3 to nothing. That's right, and the defensive battle for sure, Ethan Wilson with a 40-yard field goal with only 5 minutes and 31 seconds left in the game. Of the teams that did see action this week in 7A Region 3, the only one that lost was Gadsden City, and they dropped a tough one to a highly ranked Oxford team, 49-14. Yeah, and both the Gaston City's touchdowns came in the last uh, six minutes of the game. One, Rodney Johnson with a 46-yard punt return, and the second, Bradley Troop with a 51-yard pass to Jaquan Wood. So half the teams in the region were in action. The other half got by as we are back into region play this week. Can't wait. It'll be a big week. For most high school athletes, the goal is to play the sport they love in college or professionally. Kelsey Tangle has all the talent to do just that. For the last four years, we've watched Tangle serve passes on the court for Thompson Volleyball. But as Donette Logan found out, Kelsey is now looking for a different type of service. Duty, honor, country. Words most veterans live by, but they are also the words 17-year-old Kelsey Tangle lives by. America, to me, means uh, simply just freedom. It's just, I'm so grateful for being here and I'm glad that I get the opportunities that I get to have and I think that um, if I were in a different country it would be a little bit different and I'm just grateful for it. Kelsey is a senior at Thompson High School in Alabaster, Alabama and a star athlete on their volleyball team. Playing since she was in seventh grade it made sense Kelsey would play volleyball in college but where she wants to go may surprise some. So my dream school is the United States Coast Guard Academy. Uh, however, there are other opportunities in the range, and so uh, actually Merchant Marine just emailed me the other day and uh, popped in the question, you know, would you like to serve? And I just was like, yes, of course. The U.S. Coast Guard Academy and the United States Merchant Marine Academy competes in Division Three. Tango has a slew of academic honors as well as volleyball honors. With a resume like that, many would ask, why not Division One? It is about, you know, serving your country and you know Kelsey has that desire to do that and you know the Coast Guard Academy certainly has been her dream and you know but she's she's getting a lot of interest from a variety of schools you know from D3 to NAI to Division 2 and you know she can play volleyball at a really high level um, but the most important thing for her is to find that academic fit. 
I think that her path, she has to decide on that. I think that what we have talked about as a family is your education is your vehicle to your future. You're not going to be playing volleyball as a career for the rest of your life, but, but education is, so find your home first. It doesn't matter what D's in front of it, it, it doesn't matter if there is a United States in front of it, you have to find your home that has, again, the education and hopefully that volleyball matches up with. When you start talking with Tangle, you realize it's not really volleyball that is driving her decision, but rather a passion she has had since she was a little girl, a passion inspired by someone special to her. My grandfather, actually, he was a commander in the Coast Guard, and he went in at age 17, and he did not graduate high school. And he actually has told me multiple stories of just his experience in the Coast Guard. And I think that's inspired me the most is because hearing his stories and hearing how he lived through it and how he did his years in it and made it a career for him was just inspiring. And it just opened up a new light to see what actually I could do. When I hear her say that, I, I'm so excited for her. I know that that is what she wants to do, whether it is through an academy or an ROTC program in a, at a four-year school. But I am very, I'm proud of that. The United States Coast Guard Academy is different from any other service academy because there's no congressional nomination required. However, there's a grueling fitness evaluation, medical evaluation, and academic qualifications, none of which is taken lightly by Tangle's family. So for the fitness test, I have to run a mile and a half, and I have to do push-ups and sit-ups. Um, they're all timed, so the push-ups and sit-ups are two minutes, and then of course a mile and a half is timed and you have different slots that you can do and your score is based on um, if you pass it or if you don't pass it. When I say it takes a village to raise a child, this is what it's all about. Our family here at Thompson, our community, our family, that we've all been together in supporting her in that. So it is letters of recommendation for, for this, it's a letter of recommendation for that. It's trying to get a letter just to see our representative. I mean, we have, it, it, again, it's a village that has helped fill out these applications for Kelsey. Part of the reason for the requirements, once Tangle graduates, she will be committed to serve the Coast Guard for five years. Uh, I see the military as a career for me. And I think that with all the stories that I've heard and with everything that's going on that's happened in our family, I think that it, being that career option just suits me. And I think what they offer, just from the military perspective, is just a great idea for me to do. Not only could Tangle be traveling north to a new school in the fall, if she chooses the Coast Guard Academy, she will also be playing for a new coach. I uh, had a phone call with him last week, and Coach Thomas has a great vision for the program, as well as his cadets, and I think what he has and what's going on with him um, will lead the Coast Guard Academy to success. Kelsey and her mother have a unique bond. They are extremely close, and with Kelsey moving to a new state and a new school, is there really any way to be prepared? You hope you raise your right. And, um, and I think that when you prepare your, your children to leave the home, you prepare them with everything. You prepare them with self-confidence. You prepare them that they can tackle anything. Um, we, Kelsey and I are very close and so I think that it is so important to have that relationship with your children so that we can talk about things. One thing we do know, no matter where Kelsey goes in life, she will always leave behind a lasting impression. There was something that stood out that particular day and that was that it was the fact that she was a winner. And you always can tell when you're in the presence of a winner. Kelsey is such a good person. Um, I think Kelsey has the heart of gold. She's always been that, that loving child that has always just wanted more for herself. She humbles me daily. I, I love the way she has that drive just internally. You can't teach drive. It's not fun if it's not challenging. Donette Logan, High School Sports Weekly. What an inspiring young lady and a great story. Absolutely. Please remember to watch for more inspiring stories on these amazing athletes. And if you know of any that you think that we should cover, just message us on Facebook. And when we come back, we're going to stay in the volleyball lane and spend some time with Tuscaloosa County. Stay with us right here on High School Sports Weekly, presented by OS1 Sports Injury Clinic.
OS1 Sports Injury Clinic in Hoover is a proud partner of High School Sports Weekly. OS1 has fellowship trained sports medicine physicians right here in your community. There's no appointment needed, just drive up to the door. We've got x-ray and MRI on site. So now, being injured or having an orthopedic issue doesn't mean you need to be exposed to sick people. Avoid the hassle and time of going to an ER when you can get more specialized care in a more timely fashion at OS1. Open seven days a week to serve you. It's OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. and find them online at bettersooner.com. As you know, volleyball is in full swing, and our own Jerry Young spent some time getting to know Tuscaloosa County's head volleyball coach, Amanda Livingston, and four of her current players. Uh, coach Livingston is um, coaching at her alma mater. She, uh, I played here um, 20 something years ago and um, I've been the head coach here for the past 11 years. And I think as it goes along, I think we're going to get better. Um, again, the team is a very young team. Um, we've had a lot of injuries, we've had surgeries and injuries and you know other illnesses and stuff, but um, this group of girls have not realized their potential yet. And I think when they do and it all clicks, I think they're, they're going to be unstoppable. Oh, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I know it's fun. I mean, they're a good group of girls. Um, you can come to practice and um, they're going to have a good time. You could have an interview and you're going to have a good time with them. They're, they're a great group of girls. Um, and I guess I'm going to give another word out there. Um, they, they are hardworking. They sacrifice a lot. And, um, you know, any, like, just like any volleyball team do, they give up summers and, you know, football games and stuff like that. But they sacrifice a lot uh, to do, play a game that they love and they truly love it. Um, I'm a sophomore this year. Uh, I play outside. Away from volleyball, I'm really involved with my church, so that's a big part of, that's a big part of my life, and I try to incorporate that with volleyball too. Um, well, I'm a 10th grader at County High, and I love to play sports. I love the games that I play. Uh, I've been playing varsity since eighth grade, and we just have a good time, so. Okay, I'm a sophomore at Tuscaloosa County High. Um, I'm the libero, and I love to play volleyball. So we're the per person in the different colored jersey. Normally, it's the best defender, and they play an important role. They control the back row. I am a junior, and I play, I really play everywhere really on the front row, but this year, primarily, I'm a middle hitter. Um, Outside of volleyball, I play. I used to play softball, but I've now devoted most of my time to volleyball because that's what I want to further my career in. And I love to be in the outdoors. Um, I love my animals. I'm a very big animal lover. Well, the way I look at volleyball is it has taught me that it can be taken away in a matter of seconds and that every game, every practice, every anything that is involved volleyball that I need, I can't take that for granted. I need to put 100% into everything I do. Uh, it's definitely taught me that anything can be taken away at any point and like at some moments like when we did get sent home we were just all kind of like is our season taken away? So I think like now that we're back in the gym I think we're all kind of settled down ready to go about to start playing again. Well, my dad actually got COVID-19, and it, it, it can humble you in a way. It shows, you know, anything can be taken away from you, whether it's the game or even your health. Uh, it's, it's very serious, and it can, it just, it shows you some things that, like, you take for granted normally. My teammates, they're... They're a big part of, I want to succeed for them more than I want to succeed for myself sometimes because I just, I see them putting in so much work that they really keep me going. Oh, well, when you really love something, you like want to do it. So I guess like I love the sports I play. So when I want to do it, then I'm going to want to do it. And especially for my teammates, like I know they'll always have my back. So I just want to be there for them. My teammates really tr um, help with that. Um, 
they are the most amazing people and whenever you are down whenever you're upset and when you are in a funk they are always going to be there to bring you back they, i always know they have my back well i would i would like to say hard working like like our coach just cuz um you can see it like as a teammate of course i see my teammates putting in work and working harder pushing limits and stuff like that but even outside like you other people can tell that we do try hard we try our best awesome they're fun to be around because they are awesome people they are a great group of girls to be around we have a good time together i'd say we have grit which is like we we push through situations where you know most people might not be able to i think we play well together and we work well together and we do we do play very well whenever we are doing that determined we are a very big group we're not as she was saying we are a very young group and so i know that we are all determined to get we want to be the best so therefore we have to play the best and we are determined to be the best we can be yeah so we made this so after each game they look at stats or they decide you know who played the best defense and this is the defensive ball you win it if you you know they think you played your hardest and the players on my team they're all very hard working girls and I really respect them they're very respectable um, they're, they're just a very good group uh, we all get along very well and I think our team together we have a lot of grit I feel I feel like when we go into most games, we kind of are the underdog being like a younger team. And I feel like we come in and we, we do dominate the court whenever we're, we play together and our team. I think we have a great time playing together. I think we're all kind of there for each other. Uh, we love to do stuff together. Like, I think we have a great bond. So what was it like? You walk back in the gym, you see your teammates. There's, you know that you're going to get to play probably at least one game. What was that feeling like walking back in the gym? It felt great. Like, I was kind of tired of sitting at home, not being able to do anything, having to quarantine, and then whenever I got to back playing sports, it was a lot of fun. OS1 Sports Injury Clinic in Hoover is a proud partner of High School Sports Weekly. OS1 has fellowship trained sports medicine physicians right here in your community. There's no appointment needed. Just drive up to the door. We've got x-ray and MRI on site. So now, being injured or having an orthopedic issue doesn't mean you need to be exposed to sick people. Avoid the hassle and time of going to an ER when you can get more specialized care in a more timely fashion at OS1. Open seven days a week to serve you. It's OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. And find them online at bettersooner.com. Welcome back to High School Sports Weekly, presented by OS1 Sports Injury Clinic. Chris Stewart, along with Susan Carruthers, Susan Scott Carruthers. Those of you who may not know, her grandfather, Bubba Scott, longtime administrator, executive director, actually, of the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Before that, college coach. Did you ever hear any recruiting stories? I heard a lot of recruiting stories, but my goodness, was it a different world in recruiting back then? Very different. Look at Howard, now Samford University. Ultra competitive then, sure. just as it is now, but the way, the way you go about it is a lot different. I think this next story is great evidence of that, and we talk about it with NSR, National Scouting Report. In fact, Bradley Bozeman, former University of Alabama national champion twice, and uh, now with the Baltimore Ravens, spent some time talking about his experience walking through the recruiting process with National Scouting Report. It was always my dream to, to go and play college ball. Um, you know, I always hoped that I'd have that opportunity, but I was just going to work hard every day and see where I ended up. Started my freshman year on my varsity team at left tackle, and that's when Cowan interest started uh, coming in. Got with NSR, and it's, it was a you know, great process with them, just so just clean cut. Got my offer after my sophomore year and then committed three days after. 
There's a lot of politics in recruiting. It's a lot of just knowing what to believe and what not to. Deciphering through all the information and making sure it's all legitimate. You know, they're, they're not going to hold your hand. You can handle your own things and figure out how to, to manage all your time. For me, that, that was, it was kind of hard. I worked hard on the field, but kind of struggled with school. And you know, we have tutors and everything else you can think of. But it's still up to you to, to make sure everything gets done. Everyone else is just as good as you, just as fast. So you're going to have to work your butt off to be even better than you were before. Coming from, I've always started in every single game I've played throughout my career. And that was, that was kind of hard for me. You know, it was, uh, I wasn't the best anymore. You know, I had to, to figure out how to get on the field. It's a constant growth because there's people coming in that are just as good as you. You just have to continue to build on what you know, your knowledge base and your physicality. You know, I got into my senior year, fourth game of the season, tore my ACL, and I'm out. I'm done. It was it was kind of devastating. You know, I was committed for three years, two three months before I was going to sign my letter of intent. Got offered a gray shirt, which was completely fine, understandable. They needed a guy that could come and compete. I accepted my gray shirt because I didn't want a lifelong dream to pass by just for a delayed six months. But at the same time, you know, I've waited my turn. I've been solid. I haven't visited anywhere else. I was locked in. You know, just worked really hard and eventually got to come in about a day before camp, I believe, because someone else had not passed their physical. You know, it was just a bump in the road that I'd overcome. Exposure is the biggest key to, to having a successful college recruiting experience. Just getting out there any possible way that you can, just to make sure that your name comes up in anything the coaches talk about. If you have a question, ask. You know, make sure to, to ask all the questions, everything that that could possibly help you in the future to, to be successful, ask the questions, uh, that and get exposure. But I, I think that's the two big keys. We are back into region play in 7A Region 3 this week, and let's get into the four contests that'll take place. We start with Hoover at Hewitt. That matchup taking place at Hewitt Trustville High School. Vestavia and Thompson will meet in Alabaster. You've got Oak Mountain at home against Spain Park. And Tuscaloosa County will play host to Gadsden City. So we look forward to reviewing those matchups next week on the show. That's right. Thank you all for tuning in. Please like and share our videos. One thing we are starting this month is National High School Activities Appreciation Month. So we'll bring you more about that. But aren't we all so thankful that we are getting through the season and our appreciation is probably more this year than ever before. And we appreciate it if you wear your mask so that we can get through. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right. For Susan, I'm Chris. Mask up. And we'll see you next week on the show.